Hello once again, this is Sparkster Inc. here with a WWE Raw review for this past Monday, July 30th. Raw 1000 was the WWE at its best. Much like the Raw from a decade ago, for one night it was must-see TV. For almost every segment, every match, every promo meant something, or at least felt like it did. Sure, there were a few things to nitpick, such as Charlie Sheen being absolutely unfunny, or Triple H and Stephanie McMahon verbally owning Paul Heyman, but still WWE made the most of its whole new three-hour format. Of course, that's easy to say when you have almost every superstar, Hall of Famer, and alumni at your disposal. But once the nostalgia wore off and it was time to turn the page to, to Raw 1001, well, WWE became a lot more like John Laurinaitis, the man who thinks he's Mr. Unpredictable when Everybody in the audience knows he's anything but unpredictable. Everything that could possibly go wrong with this new three-hour format did go wrong. Like the absolutely predictable end to a main event that you could have smelled a mile away. Or the storylines that went nowhere. Or the endless recaps that repeated itself once, twice, and even three times just because Triple H was looking to bury Paul Heyman some more. Then you're left to nitpick the few positives of the show. Simply put, if Raw 1000 was a celebration, then Raw 1001 was a hard dose of harsh reality. So what went wrong or what went nowhere? Let's start at the top with the WWE Championship. It actually started off promising enough with the WWE Champion CM Punk slowly morphing himself back into the seething, bruising, angst-ridden, arrogant bastard that made him popular in the first place. Judging by his opening promo where he blasts Wayne for once again hogging the spotlight and calling out Jerry Lawler for turning his back on him. I was looking forward once again to seeing the heel who wasn't afraid to throw pipe bombs at everybody instead of the bland baby face who spent most of his time in the last few months trying to get Daniel Bryan and AJ over, which is a good thing. You know, they did get over, but as for Punk himself, you know he was poised to do bigger and better things. And finally, he thrust himself back into the main event picture, and now he's going to seriously challenge John Cena at the top of the mountain. Since he is, you know, the WWE Champion, and when you're the WWE Champion, you should be at the top of the mountain anyway, unless, of course, you're a heel, which he wasn't. But then the new Raw General Manager AJ comes out, and he announces the main event, John Cena versus The Big Show. So, as the number one contender to CM Punk, okay, that's fine. Fair enough. Then Punk intervenes in the match and causes a DQ. That was also okay with me, since Punk didn't really care who he had to face at SummerSlam in the first place. He's the best in the world. He can beat anybody. But then AJ comes out again and announces that Cena and Sho aren't losers, they are winners! Which means both men will have to face CM Punk at SummerSlam in a triple threat match. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, CM Punk is irate. Suddenly he goes from not caring at all who he has to beat, to caring way too much. Here's the problem with all of this. Not only was the whole thing totally not unpredictable, and a complete waste of everybody's time. On top of that, for CM Punk to suddenly be so concerned about who he's going to have to beat, about having to defend his title in a triple threat match, it made absolutely no sense whatsoever. He's a brash, arrogant, and cynical, self-centered prick. He's self-aware and cocky, and he tells it like it is. He's the same guy that called Mr. McMahon a hypocrite, called Cena and Dwayne, a bunch of ass kissers and Triple H a doofus son-in-law. Now after all that, all of a sudden he's so scared that he has to be in this pay-per-view title match, making him look so weak and cowardly in the process. <laughs> Give me a break. Sometimes the simplest storylines are the best storylines. Why not have AJ the GM announce the triple threat match at SummerSlam at the beginning of the show? Showcase Cena vs. Big Show in a preview of sorts of the pay-per-view title match. Then have Punk 
intervene at the end and take both men out, then have him stand tall in the center of the ring. Let him bask in this huge reaction that he would have gotten. Let him get all the booze from John Cena's fans. Let CM Punk the heel close the show with all the attention on him for once. Let the WWE Universe know that he's the man. And what can John Cena, the 12-time world champion, the perpetual underdog, what can John Cena do to stop him? Tune in next week and find out. What a concept. Prop up the heel as high as you can take him. Make him seem almost unstoppable. And it makes a victory that much satisfying and so much sweeter for John Cena and his fans if he comes back and wins at SummerSlam. That would be a much more satisfying feeling to this feud. There would be so much more buzz from all that. Rather than the anticlimactic BS that we got this week. With WWE making things much more complicated than it should be. WWE is still living in the past. They think they can be so unpredictable every single week like it was before. Stop trying to be unpredictable all the time and just be entertaining. We all know what's going on. So just let us go along for the ride. CM Punk is supposed to be the man. John Cena is chasing him. And Big Show stands in his way. So stop, so stop jerking around with these guys and let them do what they do best. That is all. Another thing that went nowhere this week. AG as the GM. They made such a big deal at Raw 1000, but is it living up to the hype? Not really. Not so far. No doubt that she looks good in a business suit, but is she any more powerful? Is she any more significant being in a GM role? She'll have to do much more than, keep, than just to keep dealing with CM Punk and Daniel Bryan every week. Anybody could have put on a GM cap and do exactly what she did. Also, it is kind of hard to take her seriously as a GM if she's spending most of her time continuing to torture Daniel Bryan every week. There's nothing surprising or crazy about what she did. She'll have to start interacting more with other wrestlers, other superstars, if she's going to stick to this role. So what else went wrong with this week, or what else went nowhere? How about these seemingly endless recaps? How many times do you have to remind us that there was a pyro malfunction prior to the start of the show? How many times do you have to remind us that Daniel Bryan didn't get married last week? Or how about the epitome of all this nonsense? Reminding us that Triple H and Stephanie McMahon verbally owned Paul Heyman not once, not twice, but three different times on the same live broadcast. How lazy do you have to be to not put out anything better? And how bad does Paul Heyman look right now? Watching him get pawned on the mic over and over and over again. So Heyman can't talk about the McMahon's kids, but they can turn around and talk about his? Yeah, that's not hypocritical at all. How am I supposed to believe that this will be a very competitive feud? And that Triple H isn't just going to beat Lesnar to a pulp? Because that's the impression that I'm getting right now, and Cena has already beaten Lesnar, so... What's the point of seeing Triple H do the same thing? Only worse. Uh, I think WWE really needs to take a serious long look at this. What should be a very intriguing feud between the two unstoppable forces is turning out to be a huge dud. Almost beyond repair. And don't get me started on this idea that Heyman and Lesnar are supposed to be suing WWE. Because if that's supposed to be the case, they should be barred from WWE shows. These should be outside the arena trying to invade their way into Raw live events. They should be out there picketing outside the arena, you know, just to throw a little logic and reason into a few that's already lost any semblance of logic and reason. Uh, so some other things on, on Raw that went absolutely nowhere. Tensai destroying Tyson Kidd, who cares? He's not a monster heel anymore, especially when John Cena keeps beating him. So, And he hasn't won anything meaningful since he's come back. So why keep dragging him out there to do the same thing? 
he's been doing since the start. Uh, Alberto Del Rio being Santino Morel for the 20th time. Well, I, and I guess it served a point that Alberto Del Rio wasn't going to compete again until the pay-per-view, which, you know, which is fine with me. His feud with Shame, with and never ending feud with Sheamus, is already stale anyway. Uh, there really hasn't been much build up at all, and Sheamus already beat Del Rio emphatically at Money in the Banks. So the only real question is will Dolph Ziggler cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase, and if so, who will be champ when he does? Just give us something to make the world title interesting again. The one true positive about the show was seeing Daniel Bryan's meltdown. Almost everything he did after losing to Sheamus was very entertaining. Uh, attacking little Jimmy, telling the crowd to stop chanting, Yes! No! 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 We're not going to stop chanting, Yes! 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 And goat, the goat face reference was a nice touch, and Kane wanting to be his anger management counselor was okay. But speaking of anger management the only problem I have with all this is WWE is continuing to tease the possibility of Daniel Bryan versus Charlie Sheen. Please, please don't do it. Uh, some other positive things. The tag match between Christian and Jericho versus Miz and Ziggler was very good. Damien Sandow feuding with Brodus Clay. It may not sound like much, and he's no genius, but if he can find, if they can find a way to have him beat the 300-pound Brodus Clay, then it'll help elevate him as a as another credible, useful mid-card heel. And of course, there was the return of Randy Orton. Please, please, please don't blow it this time, Randy. You'll always have a spot at the top as long as you don't keep getting busted for violating the wellness policy. So overall, one Raw 1001 was a big letdown. The three-hour format just isn't going to work if there's going to be too much filler. However, despite all that, despite a half-assed effort, there's still plenty of time for WWE to make things right. And that's why we're still here watching something a lot of us probably should have stopped watching a long time ago. Because once in a while, WWE does something right, and we just have to keep tuning in. Let's just hope they give us that reason to keep tuning in. So, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all next week for the next Raw review.